Hello, Pete. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, actually. Actually, I was thinking of putting a long wire antenna down my garden because I've only got a small garden. I want to operate on several bands. So I thought I'd just put a uh, length of wire down the garden. That should work, shouldn't it? Well, yeah, but you need an A to you, mate. Oh, well, yes, I've been doing some reading, and if I use a 9 to 1 unun, that should work on all bands. Yeah, providing you use an A to you, mate. Oh, yes, I see. Actually, I was reading the other day that if I use a 49 to 1 unun, then I can operate on all the bands. Like, if I put a 66 foot of wire down the garden, I can operate on 40 metres, 20 metres, 15 and 10 metres. That will do the trick, won't it? So what are you going to do on 12 and 17 metres then? Oh, yes, I forgot those two bands. Um, yeah, what's the answer then? Do you really want to know? Oh, yes, as a, as a newcomer, I look up to you. Uh, what's the answer? <laughs> oh, Pete, I don't know how to tell you this. Um, you need an ATU. Well, poor old Peter, he got totally confused there. I don't think his mate helped much either. I guess when I was uh, a lot younger, first licensed, I would have been in the same situation, a bit confused when the older, more experienced hams were telling me what I should and shouldn't do. Of course, you never know whether the advice they're given is right or wrong. Anyway, let's move on. I think most of us from time to time will use an antenna tuning unit or an antenna matching unit if we want to be really politically correct because there's always a problem of getting a perfect match. Although we don't actually need a perfect match. But anyway, we have internal antenna tuners in our transceivers and uh, if they're there we might as well use them. As regards external antenna matching units, well I suppose the 49 to 1 and the 9 to 1 ununs have largely taken their place in many ham radio shacks. They do a pretty good job actually. They provide a means of getting a decent match. Not a perfect match, but a decent match. A match that is good enough for your internal matching unit to take up the remaining slack. So in those cases, you probably don't need an external matching unit. But sometimes you do. I mean, let's, for example, look at the very popular N-fed half-wave, the 49 to 1 Anun is the basically the universal matching unit for that. Some will argue that you need a, uh, a what is it, a 64 to 1, and some will say a 36 to 1, but 49 to 1 seems to be the middle of the road. But although they work on their harmonics, they don't work on other frequencies. So if, for example, you've got a, a, a 20 meter length of wire down the garden, which is resonant on 40 meters as a half wave, and it'll work on 20 meters, it'll work on 15 and 10, but it won't work on 17 meters and it won't work on 12 meters. What do you do then? So what are you going to do on 12 and 17 meters then? And when you're out portable and you want to hop around the bands with a length of uh, wire, well, your anons aren't really going to solve the problem. So let's look at an alternative, um, a very simple antenna tuning unit or antenna matching unit before those that will pop up on the channel and say, Peter, it's wrong. It's not a tuning unit, it's a matching unit. I think we all know what we're talking about. Now, of course, if uh, you've got an antenna up in the air, you can't really replace the 9 to 1 unun with a uh, L match. But uh, if you're out portable or for whatever reason you've got uh, the 9 to 1 unun near ground level, then you can replace it with the L match. And it'll probably give you greater flexibility. And of course, if you haven't got a uh, antenna tuner in your transceiver, it will match your NFED wire. You know, there's something called an L match, which I used very early on in my ham radio career, because if you wanted a matching unit, you had to build one. There weren't many ready built ones around. And the L match has survived today because it's actually the basis of many antenna tuning units, many antenna commercial tuning units, or should I say matching units. The L match is very simple, put it up on the screen here. All it is is an inductor and a capacitor. You need a variable inductor and 
a variable capacitor. Now there's many variable inductors around these days because there's these units that slide up and down the uh, inductor for tuning a, a base loaded mobile whip. Well, they are variable inductors. You, of course, can have a variable inductor, which is basically switched. You have a number of turns that you switch. You select the inductance. It's not fine-tuned, but it gives you sort of chunks of various inductances. And that's really the way that uh, many internal antenna tuners or auto antenna tuners work. And, of course, you need a variable capacitor. Now, you can easily make an inductor. You can wind it on a coil and you can put tappings on it and so forth. It's not too difficult. Variable capacitors are a bit more of a problem. There are a few variable capacitors on the used market, but it's very difficult to find a new one. And I've actually found one, which is available on the Etsy um, site, which is basically sort of a craft site or things that you build yourself and that sort of thing. But there's this, this uh, capacitor on the Etsy site, which is very good. There's a number of different values. If you go on the Etsy and put variable capacitor, you'll see it come up. The capacitors are handmade and they're made in Cyprus. Um, the only downside is that it takes about five or six weeks to arrive because it has to be made and it comes by sort of snail post, but it does arrive. Let me, let me show you the one I've purchased recently for a slightly different project, but I think it'll give you some idea of this capacitor. It's so unusual these days to find handmade components. I mean, take a look at this. That is a handmade variable capacitor. It's beautifully made and somehow it's rather satisfying to use a handmade component. Well, I find it satisfying anyway. The main material appears to be alloy. If I turn it round, which I'll see. And uh, you see on the front there, there are three mounting screws. Um, so you mount it flat onto a, a panel. You just see those screws there. The, uh, there's also some plastic insulation. And on the rear, there's some solder or pair of solder tags, one for the outer veins and one for the inner veins. And uh, it's uh, altogether a nice looking little unit. So let's have a look at the L network, see how it might fit into your station or if you're out portable, what it might do for you. Now I've put up on the screen the basic circuit. This is actually part of an impedance matching calculator and I'll talk about that in uh, a few moments. The basic circuit, on the left hand side you've got the output of your transceiver together with the characteristic impedance which is 50 ohms. So you've got a 50 ohm load on the left hand side and the output of that feeds into the L network and the L network basically comprises the inductor L or the horizontal inductor at the top there and the C following it which goes down to earth. Both those ideally should be variable in order to be able to match a wide range of, uh, of impedances and on the far side You've got the load impedance, which uh, is uh, in ohms, and you also got the reactance. And those two components combined together present the problem that the network has to deal with. And here you see the full screen under the actual calculator. You enter the frequency and the reactance and the loads into the segments below the uh, circuit diagram, and then below the just off screen below there, you'll get the resultant values of L and C. Now the L match network can be used for quite a wide range of antenna systems. It's very, very much at home um, in the portable application and where you use a 9 to 1 unun, you could replace it with this L network and you'd get a better match. And of course you'd have the flexibility of being able to move around the various bands. Unfortunately it does mean to say you've actually got to adjust the network, you've got to adjust the L and the C for the particular band you're operating on, but it's uh, going to give you a better match than you would get with a uh, 9 to 1 unan, and of course there won't be any losses that you might get in the far out material. And also it could be used as uh, feeding an end fed half wave. Um, it should cope okay actually with an end fed half wave, but there's no real point in 
feeding an infed half wave with it because it's going to be very high impedance and it's better not to have a very high impedance when you're using an L network because there's going to be a high voltage there. So really and truly, where you would use a 9 to 1 unun, this could be substituted. You're really looking for medium to high or medium to low impedances and as such it should quite happily match those impedances. Now of course to get the optimum matching you need to have a VSWR meter between the antenna tuner or this matching unit and your transceiver, although your transceiver may have one in so you may not need to have a, a separate uh, SWR meter. In days gone by we used to use a current meter we used to put a current meter in the wire and that was really very easy to adjust. You just adjust the antenna matching unit for maximum current in the antenna. Quite easy, but you don't see so many of the RF meters around now. If you're going to use it to, to feed an N-fed wire, then you really should have a counterpoise because you don't you could get voltage on the, uh, um, the, the negative plate or the earth plate of the capacitor and if it's mounted in a uh, metal box, you want well, a short counterpoise. It doesn't have to be too long. Um, about four or five meters of wire will be adequate. It will keep the voltage off the uh, the capacitor. And uh, if, as I say, if it's mounted in the box, keep the voltage off the box. Can you use it with coax? Yes, you can use it with coax, actually. There's no reason why you can't use it with a coax-fed system. Um, but generally speaking, most coax-fed systems will be coped with quite well by the internal ATU in your transceiver, but by all means try it. You know, it's one of these simple things that you can make yourself and have some fun with. Um, as regards the rating of the capacitor, <clears throat> I think that um, the capacitor I showed you should handle 100 watts okay. It really depends on what the voltage is at the end there, but if you avoid um, high voltages at the end, which means to say you want to have uh, what we call a non-resonant length of wire. In other words, that length of wire is not resonant on any band you're likely to use. Um, it'll present a fairly medium to high impedance and the tuner unit should cope quite well. And as I say, you could sit down and make one of these uh, quite happily. It's a, it's a fun project really. It's a project which a lot of people could actually make an experiment with. And provided you've got a bit of wire, a coil former and a capacitor, you can mess around with it and I mean you could have dedicated just to one length of wire on one band I suppose but I might come back to that in a later video because I've got some ideas on that but in the meantime it's a fun project and it's a very useful project it'd be a good project for clubs to to try out and as I say it's very useful for portable work because it gives you great agility with your antenna your bit of wire you run up over the tree whatever you should be able to match it okay with it so a simple idea Something that's been around for years. The basic circuit is in many of the commercial matching units and it's something that you can make yourself. And don't forget those uh, capacitors, the variable capacitors, they do look quite nice. And there's a, they, they, they range from, I think, around about 50 puff uh, uh, maximum to about 400 puff maximum. So they, they, they've got a wide range there. Now, it's very difficult to actually tell you what values you need. I would say that if you're talking about 40 meters, upwards you probably need around about 300 puff capacitor and uh, the inductor well you probably need uh, I'm, I'm guessing now you probably need around about um, 80 microhenry something like that or maybe less than 50 microhenry but if you go onto that calculator and you can put some values in it'll give you some idea of what values you need for a particular band so as usual thank you for watching this video. Thank you for supporting this video channel. Much appreciated actually. And don't forget that we have an excellent uh, supply of amateur radio equipment based at Milton Keynes. We've got a showroom there. You can call in. It's easy parking, no problem at all. It's only a few minutes from the M1 motorway, so it's with any re easy reach of a lot of people. And we'd be more than happy to see you there. And if you, if you call in, we speak to them on the phone, don't forget to mention the video channel. They like to know how well the video channel is being watched because it encourages us to keep doing the videos. In the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio, you take care, and I look forward to seeing you, as usual, in the next video. Bye for now. You need an ATU.